Hi, everybody, and welcome to Living Word Lutheran Church. My name is Debbie Stankovich, and anytime you see me here, it means we've probably had a technology glitch. That assumption would be accurate today. For some reason, the audio did not record on the video, so instead of giving you something that's basically unusable, I decided we would do a brief meditation on the um, scripture that we read with um, this morning's service. It's um, based on Acts 2 because today is Pentecost Sunday. So before we get going though, um, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. So if you'll join me. Oh, Heavenly Father, things of this world fail, but um, you are always faithful and we give you thanks and praise for the presence of your Holy Spirit even in the times that we don't fully appreciate it, we know and take great comfort in the fact that you, our helper, our helper and comforter, are with us. So we invite you and welcome you into this time now as we dive in a little deeper and, and study Acts 2 and just rejoice in the fact that on this day, we celebrate the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray all of this in the holy and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, um, just a, a little housekeeping note. I haven't really had much time to prepare this, so if you find me uh, referring to my notes quite a bit, it's probably going to be a little distracting, but I hope not too much. But I... Didn't expect to be doing this, but I'm really glad I got to because I got some insights today as I reflected on what we heard in worship this morning that I probably wouldn't have gotten any other way. So, as I said, today is Pentecost, and this is the day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit descending upon the apostles and their followers, as told in the book of Acts. So, Pastor Gary Jepson was the lector today, and before he read Acts 2, he gave us um, a little bit of a lesson on what really happened that day. There are people, and by the way, I'm paraphrasing. These aren't his words exactly. There are people who believe that what was happening that day was unintelligible. But in fact, all of the languages that were being spoken were actually recognizable languages of the day. So we think that's, that's pretty amazing. And to try to replicate that experience, um, Pastor Jepson read John 3.16 in Danish, and then various other members of the congregation read John 3.16 in other languages. I, we heard John 3.16 in German, French, Latin, Tamil, Chinese, Feel like there was one more um, Russian. I think it was Russian. And then after each person read individually, they went back and they all read together. And so what you had was layers of languages being all saying the same message, proclaiming the same gospel, but in different languages and at the same time. And we know that those are human languages. So it, what they heard that day may have sounded very much like what we experienced this morning. So with that in context, in, in the, the back of your mind, let's read Acts 2 and uh, learn more about what happened that day. And I am reading from the ESV translation. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews devout man from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, 
and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Acts or Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, excuse me, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling it in our own tongues, the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, <laughs> That doesn't happen every day, right? Uh, but, but what does it mean for us today? Well, there are two aspects that came to mind as I pondered this question in preparation for this meditation. And the first is, what impact does it have for us collectively? And there, I think it's huge. Number one, this was the birth of the church. This is when the very same spirit who was present at the time the earth was formed, who was present when, when Jesus was conceived, who was present in his life every day that he walked this earth, decided to take up residence in the apostles and their followers. And that's what gave birth to the church. And collectively, they were all together that day. Collectively, they all had that experience at the same time. And now, for them as a body of believers in Jesus, knowing the man, they knew the man in flesh and blood, and now they knew him on a different level. And they would f receive... Um, that gift and walk in obedience to his will for, for the rest of their lives, hopefully, instead of doing whatever pleased them in the flesh. And then the second aspect, I think, that's interesting about this is that there's an individual component to this as well. And I don't know that we even know how to begin to measure the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I know I don't. Maybe you do. I don't. And I'm not ashamed to say that because it just reminds me of my need for a Savior. But I'm reading this and I'm looking at Peter and how Peter comes to the defense of those who are being mocked. Oh, they're, they're drunk. They're, they've just had new wine. 
Peter says, no, 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 that's not what's going on here. Listen up. This was prophesied, and he begins to quote Joel. And he, he rolls out a boldness and an authority that he had not had up until that moment, at least that we know of. And by the end of the day, or shortly thereafter, 3,000 people were converted by the power of the Holy Spirit working through Peter. This is the same Peter who just weeks before was too timid to even acknowledge that he knew and loved Jesus. He betrayed him. So when we see what God can do through one individual on one day, we, we need to know that we're no different than Peter. He can do things. He can do miraculous things through us if we are obedient to his nudgings. And it makes me wonder, what could we do if, if every believer, empowered by the Holy Spirit, responded to those nudgings on a daily basis? You know, what, would, what would that kingdom look like for Jesus Christ across this world? So while I see that there are two aspects, one being the church and the second being the individuals, the church is made up of the people. And so what we do individually and collectively is really important when it comes to how we live as spirit-filled believers in this world. So with that, what does God ask us to do? He just asks us to deliver the same good news that he sent his son to die for. And it's simple. It's a simple message. We heard it today multiple times in multiple languages in church. And I wish you had had that experience of hearing it too. But that Holy Spirit empowers us beyond human capabilities. And we need to live as equipped and empowered and encouraged believers in this world. That's all we proclaim. For God so loved this world that he gave his only son. And that whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Let us pray. Oh, Holy Spirit, may we always be aware of your presence and power in our lives. We ask that you convict us of our disobedience when you are calling us to action. Forgive us for neglecting to put you first in our lives and encourage, equip, and empower us to live our faith boldly and with authority as your ambassadors in this world. Bless the week ahead and make us sensitive to those places you are calling us to minister and to proclaim the promise of John 3.16, especially in this world so desperate for a Savior. We pray all of this in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit today. Um, if you're new to Living Word Lutheran Church, you can find out more about us at livingwordlutheranchurch.com. And um, there are lots of ways you can get in touch with us from that website. Um, I'm the website person and the YouTube person, so um, any questions that you might have will come to me. We invite you to check us out and um, just have a blessed week in the Lord. Thanks be to God.